Hey you guys, it's Crystal. It's 5.15 p.m. Central Standard Time on a Tuesday night, and so it is in class time. Um, I'm going to move all of my ingredients over to this countertop because I just think it works better for me. And I think the lighting's better for everybody. And this meal actually doesn't even require a stove top, so we can totally do it here. Um, so I'm just going to round up the rest of my ingredients and bring them on over here, and then we'll get going, okay? Hey, Ancestral Living is back. Yay! <laughs> this is going to be kind of a quick meal. This will be good. Because everybody likes those, right? Hey Brenda, hey Julie. So I don't know if everybody saw or not, but I have the video up of these delicious granola bars. Now I have not cheated and ate one because I can't have oats while I'm healing my cavities. But you guys, look at them. They turned out so beautiful. So if you guys have not watched that video, go watch it. They smell absolutely amazing. And they have molasses in them, which is like a source of iron. So that's great. Now that I've moved all of my stuff, it's telling me I don't have very good reception sitting here. Okay, is that okay? I hope you guys can still see me. They are delicious, you guys. If you guys had smell vision you'd be all over it. Okay, so what we're going to make tonight is a green chili casserole. You could use chicken or pork. Um, tonight I'm going to be using already cooked chicken just to make this fast if you guys don't have already cooked meat, you sure could saute some up, or you could just put it into your casserole raw. You just might have to bake it for a little while longer. So I like to cook all of my chickens up whole, because we raise whole chickens, obviously. You don't raise just chicken legs on a farm, you raise a whole chicken. And so we raise a whole chicken, we butcher it, we freeze it whole, and then I actually cook them in a slow cooker, like our big roaster, uh, with a whole bunch of water, so I make broth, and then we take the meat off, and then I still leave the bones in there and refill the liquid to make a bone broth, so I get double broth out of one chicken. I just think it's the best way to use a chicken. You use everything, and it stretches everything. So I end up with a whole bunch of already cooked chicken that's already been shredded, and that's what I'm going to be using tonight, but you sure could cut up a boneless, skinless, with skin, some sort of um, chicken, okay? And the reason why I said with skin is because if you look at the tests that have been done, boneless, skinless chicken breasts, because it's without any fat and without any skin, are way lower in vitamin A than the counterpart that has the skin and the fat. And what does your body need in order to utilize the protein you're eating? Vitamin A. So it just goes through the rough, especially if you buy a, um, a free range chicken that's been out into the sunshine, they have a lot of um, uh, more vitamin A from the sun, okay? Vitamin A and D, so they, they get to eat all the bugs and everything else and turn it into absolutely amazing nourishment for you. So when you're selecting chicken, avoid the boneless, skinless chicken breast section because you're really depriving your body of that vitamin A that we all need to um, eat your, your meat. So, And Ancestral Living says, why waste collagen? Yeah, I know. It's just the way they have taken our society is away from whole foods. So um, anyway, so I'm, I'm going to do this quickly because it's a quick one. And then... Um, let's see, Deborah had asked about my necklace, so we're going to talk a little bit about this necklace, because I wear it all the time, and so she's actually the second person that has asked me about my necklace, where I bought it, why I wear it all the time, so I'm going to talk about that next. So the first thing we're going to do, actually, is go ahead and preheat the oven to 350 degrees, and make sure there's nothing else in the oven when you do that. <laughs> it's been a crazy week, you guys. Julie says, when I can my chicken, I leave as much skin and fat as I possibly can and still get a good seal. I know. Canning is so, 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 so tricky, too. Even with broth, um, you kind of have to take that fat layer off because otherwise you can have an explosion. Um, when the pressure changes from taking it out of your canner to your countertop, 
um, that can spew everywhere. Um, and so that can be obviously dangerous. So usually I take my um, broth and I go ahead and let it cool all the way in some gallon glass jars and the fat actually comes to the top and I just scoop it off. And then what's left, I put into the jars, into the canner. And even then I only go like to the shoulders of a jar with my homemade canned broth because I'm terrified it's going to shoot out and burn me. It hasn't yet, but um, since I started straining the fat off, it's um, a lot safer to can. Okay, so we are going to take our fat, which this is uh, lard. You guys know I love lard. If I ever cook with tallow, it's because I've completely ran out of lard. And we bought a whole hog this spring, and I turned it into a ton of lard, so I don't see that happening anytime soon. But if I ever cook with, with tallow, you guys will know that things are getting rough around here. <laughs> so I'm going to take my um, lard, and I'm going to grease this pan up. We don't want anything to stick. This isn't really that sticky of a meal, but if you let it go a little too long inside the um, oven, you might get something to stick. Okay, I'm gonna rub the extra in to my hands. All right, I'm gonna get out a bowl here. I actually have, um, I actually have some bacon grease on the on the on my stove over there. <laughs> One of those deals I um, went ahead and uh, cured and smoked my own bacon this year it was really good and so it's like anytime I can save anything off of it I do it's really delicious and get myself a spoon we are looking for one pound of cream cheese I'm just gonna estimate because this is a two pound jar and I've already eaten into it a little bit <laughs> This is not rocket science. It doesn't have to be exact. Hey, Carl. Carl's in the house. How are the bees, Carl? How are the bees? Okay, so one pound of cream cheese. This makes a 13 by 9 pan, by the way, just in case you're wondering. I always get into my cooking class, and then I forget that I need to tell you how much this makes. So a 13 by 9 pan. I don't know that I would recommend freezing this because there is sour cream. That's the next ingredient. We just love Nancy sour cream, you guys. Um, I get it from Azure Standard, and the flavor is just out of this world. So, But you could use, if you can't afford organic, um, reach for uh, Daisy sour cream. That's an okay brand if you had to have okay. So two cups of sour cream. There's a whole 16 ounce container that's going on in. I'm just going to mix this. The other ingredient is um, two cans of diced green chilies. I can't seem to find organic uh, diced chilies that are canned in my area. And when it comes to peppers and especially hot peppers, they're really sprayed heavily with pesticides. So I try to always reach for organic ones. Um, and I tried Azure this last month and it was out of stock. So what I actually ended up doing, let me go grab it, hold on a second. Um, I'm completely blown away by this company. So it is called Spices Inc. And what I did was I bought, um, whole dried organic Anaheim chilies, which is a green chili. Um, and I, they mailed them to me in a bag. And I opened them and said, oh my gosh, these are smoked, which makes them even better. Um, and so what I did was I took them and I put them inside my blender and I made it into a powder. So now I have organic smoked Anaheim chili powder. It's so good. It smells so good. So I'm going to be using this tonight instead of the canned stuff, only because I couldn't find anywhere that carried organic canned green chili. So just make a note, Anaheim chilies are the same thing as a green chili. So I'm going to be using that tonight. But if you don't have that, you can use two cans of diced green chilies. Thank you, Ancestral Living, for sharing it to your Facebook group. group, bleh, face group <laughs> Facebook group, whatever I'm trying to say. It's been crazy, you guys. I've been making, I made the, um, the bars today, the, the uh, granola bars. I'm in the middle of making really healthy, delicious um, jerky. 
Um, I've got a whole chicken cooking the Manson pot over there. I made some rice aroni today for the trip. I made some baked beans, which is over here in that pot right there. And I made enough so we can have that as a side with this. So, and then on top of that, I've been installing my drip system in my, for irrigation in my garden. I've been trying to plant all my plants because we leave in like four days. It's been kind of nuts. Okay, so uh, two cans of diced green chilies. I'm going to, I'm trying to judge how much I should put in there. Maybe two teaspoons. I don't want to burn like the taste buds off of my kids. Like if it was just me eating it, I'd put a good tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half. But I mean, I have to think of the children, you know, so... I think I'm, I'm going to go with two, two teaspoons of this powder. We'll just see. But if you're making it at home and you've got canned green chilies, it's two of the small little jars of green chilies. All right, I'm going to grab some cumin. Okay, we need one teaspoon, which looks like about what I have on in here. It's one teaspoon of ground cumin. Close enough. <laughs> this is so good. And it's technically, it's keto. So, um, it's great. Okay, then salt is a half of a teaspoon of salt. I should have grabbed that too. We're going on a little salt hunt here. See, we have this fun game in our house where everyone just hides the salt. And usually I go on a search before the cooking class, but I didn't get the opportunity tonight. So, healthy salt. We want pink Himalayan salt, colored salt, uh, what else? Real salt, sea salt, as long as it's not white, because if you go to Walmart and buy sea salt, they sell white sea salt. You want color. You don't want someone to be taking your sea salt, stripping all the nice minerals out of it, and then handing it back to you. That's ridiculous. Okay, so this is a half of a teaspoon of healthy salt going on in. Okay, now to this, I'm going to add six cups of, yeah, Redmond sea salt is our favorite. Um, we're going to add six cups of your choice of meat. I've even made this with, like, the beef off of the, uh, the beef bones when I'm making broth, like if, it, if they come with some meat on them. I've made it with that leftover. It's really good. So I'm going to do mine with chicken. Like I said, if you have raw, that's fine. Just chop it up into smaller pieces and measure out your six cups. I think it's pretty much going to be this entire container except for like two cups. So we're just going to, we're just going to dump it here. I got to check for bones as I'm going because, um, yeah, I'll let a kid sort this out today. <laughs> hey, Heroic Pepper. Hey, how are you? New subscriber here. Hey, thanks for, thanks for joining our community. That's awesome. Trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I never thought I'd even be at 800. So I'm extremely grateful for every single one of you guys. I never, ever, ever thought I'd be here, but I'm really like, I really feel like this is something that I'm called to do. And I love doing it. I love impacting that next generation. So I'm, I'm grateful for all of you. You look like my grandmother cooked close enough was how she added her meals. The table was always full of food and people. I love, I love it when my table's full of people. I was just talking to somebody. There's a bone. Nevaeh. Nevaeh will never watch my videos because she's too little and she doesn't have her own phone and she probably won't until she buys her own. But anyway, um, <laughs> she was the one that went through this chicken for me. Oh man. Anyway, I was talking to some family last week and they were talking about coming for a visit and they're like, oh, we can go out to eat. Um, we can meet you in town. You know, that way you don't have to cook. And I thought, I love to cook. I love to make a meal that is so absolutely delicious that you sit at my table and you make groaning noises because it's so delicious. That's what, that's the experience I want. I, I don't know that I want to eat out. I want, I want to be able to feed you. I want to, I want to nourish you while you sit at my table and I can sit there and watch you chew it and think, wow, their, their cells are rejoicing. That's what I want. So, all right. I think that's pretty darn close. So this was an eight cup container and I think there's about two cups left. Okay. Brenda, I think I said hi to you already, but hello, Brenda, just in case I didn't. I'm so glad you're on, girl. The best cook, little this, little that. The only problem with the cooks that just kind of throw stuff in is that then we can never have a recipe. And so then, 
That's why I've been like so adamant about trying to make sure I write down my recipes because after I'm long gone, I want my girls to be able to make recipes. And if I don't write them down and it's just all in my head and it's all by taste, then how do you teach somebody to cook? You don't. I know back when I was learning how to cook, I learned how to cook from Rachel Ray. And she did the whole, like, ah, half a teaspoon, just kind of guessing. And that drove me nuts because I was like, you have to measure it out because it has to be the same every single time. And while there is, there are meals where it should be the same every single time, it really doesn't have to be the same every single time. I'm going to grab my pan now that I've made a mess out of my hands. That's okay, I'll just wash one hand. You can use a spoon too, but I don't know. It's fine. This is going to get dumped into our... 13 by 9 pan. <laughs> this is messier. It's fun. It's my it's like my Play-Doh time. Anyway, you just want your meat coated, and then we're just going to press it down into the pan. I'm probably going to switch to a spoon now, just to be honest. And the oven is telling me it's preheated at 350 degrees. Look at a spatula. I'll even upgrade myself to a spatula. <laughs> all right the weather's been more normal here although it tried to like have a frost which is highly unusual after may 15th in fact we've been living here for 10 years and that's never happened and we had one so that was weird to go from tornadoes to frost in a week but this is what it is oh i lost some put that in there okay there we go, guys. This is ready to go into the oven and bake. It's gonna bake at 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes. My meat's already cooked, so honestly, I could probably pull it out at like 25 minute mark. Um, but we're just gonna throw it in there and set a 30 minute mark, uh, 30, 30 minute timer over here. Like I said, I'm gonna serve baked beans to go with this if you wanna learn how to make your own. It's under my uh, pork and beans video. I just omitted the pork and used the same ingredients. It's delicious. So I'm gonna do one more thing and then we're gonna talk about the necklace. Everyone's wondering why I wear this all the time when we talk about that. I'm going to chop up some carrots and make my famous carrot fries. If you guys don't know about these, you should totally try them, they're totally worth it. Okay. So it's the first step in everything. I am going to take some lard. Lard up my pan. I have tried this with coconut oil. It's okay. But they do kind of taste coconut oily. Donnie says, I forgot it was Tuesday. Oh my gosh, girl, you're telling me. I had to get tires on my car this afternoon. I was like, oh, it's Tuesday. I have a class tonight. I hope he gets done in time. He did, but I forgot it was Tuesday. Busy dealing with the garden. I know. I ended up making the chili recipe off your channel. I had to upgrade my recipe book to fit all of your delicious recipes in it. <laughs> so um, I, I did get your message, Samantha, about the garden. So when it comes to garden plants, it depends on what plant that you're planting, whether or not you have enough time to get anything out of it before it freezes. So like if you're talking about tomatoes, I would reach for like Roma tomatoes at this point because they all mature at the same time. And I think it's around 50 days till they start um, producing tomatoes and we still have time for that. Um, you just have to look at your seed packets. Um, and I would probably skip the seeds at this point, when it, especially when it comes to peppers, tomatoes, that sort of thing um, that take several weeks to grow. And I just go to a greenhouse and buy some. That's what I would do. Okay, I'm going to go get my carrots. So I just greased this nice jelly roll pan. Carl says, I went... I went to come as you are meal with the neighbors and someone brought a taco spaghetti casserole. Oh, oh, that sounds good. I love spaghetti casseroles. I love like million dollar spaghetti. That's so good. All right, I'm gonna grab some carrots, you guys. Bear with me. Wait till you guys see the, the uh, jerky video because that jerky is so easy to make. It's crazy. Crazy easy. I'm trying to make room here. The lard might have to go away. <laughs> we 
when the neighbors all left, when they helped us with our storm cleanup, I said, oh, we're having a barbecue. I'm gonna cook for the whole neighborhood. Get ready. <laughs> all right. So this carrot recipe, I keep going back to it because we actually love it as much as french fries. And I know I've done it on other lives, so hopefully it's not gonna be too boring. If you have something you want to talk about while I'm chopping carrots, comment down below and we'll talk about it. And then after I'm done, we'll talk about my necklace. What breed of birds do you raise for me? Oh, good question, Ancestral. So if I knew your name, I'd call you by that, but all I know is Ancestral living. So <laughs> um, the birds that I love, absolutely love to raise for me are Freedom Rangers. Uh, my husband works. And so a lot of the chores and everything are on me. And um, because he works a job, um, he can't just call in sick to butcher chickens. Because Corners Cross chickens like to die. Um, they like to die when it's hot. They like to die when it's cold. They like to die when they're stressed. They like to die just because they want to have a heart attack because they got so big and that's as big as they're going to get. You thought you could get another pound on them and they decide not. Um, and I just got sick of that. We used to raise it with some friends. Um, and it was just like, they would call and say, they're dropping dead, we have to butcher today. And then my husband would be like, well, I can't do it. And honestly, with me with five kids, that's really hard just to go and butcher all day. Carissa, awesome. I'm gonna try and remember that. I'm horrible with names though, so don't get like offended if I forget it. If you have spots or like, uh, or like a certain color of fur, like an animal, I'd probably be able to remember it, but. Some days I don't even remember my own kids' names. <laughs> um, so anyway, back to the Freedom Ranger. The Freedom Ranger is what I love. Uh, it's freedomrangerhatchery.com to order some. I never lost a single bird. They handle stress absolutely amazing. When we had the 107 mile per hour winds out here, slash tornado, didn't lose a single one. I can tell you right now that if our pen would have been full of Cornish Cross, they all would have been dead. So um, anyway, they get, we, uh, I use my own soy free, meat bird feed. I have that video up here. It's an older video. You would have to scroll down. Um, it's probably like one of my first 20 videos, you guys. Um, but I have an entire recipe on there that works absolutely amazing. It is soy free and corn free. It is down at one of the beginning videos of the channel. We used that last year. Um, we combined that with a feeding chart that I found on backyardchickens.com about Freedom Rangers. It told you exactly how much feed to feed each day. I weighed it out and there, um, I also fermented my feed by soaking it for three days um, in buckets just outside. So you just take um, five gallon buckets, three of them. You measure out the feed that the chicken's going to eat for each day and each bucket is one day. And then what you do is add a little bit of apple cider vinegar and some filtered water. And the reason why you want filters is because you're going to be um, going to be fermenting their feed, so you want good bacteria to take over. So in order to get filtered water to the animals without paying an arm and a leg, you can buy um, Boogie Brew hose filters. Um, and then your water that comes out is filtered to your animals as well. So anyway, you, you put the, you measure out the grain, you weigh it, you do a couple splashes of apple cider vinegar, you submerge it in your Boogie Brew water that came out of your hose, you get three buckets for three days. You let it set for three days, and then you use the first one. And then once you use the first one, you replenish the first one. So that in, within three days, that one's been sitting for three days and you're ready to go. And you just keep doing that. And as long as your weather is warm enough, fermented feed is so much better for animals. They put on more weight, they eat less, you guys. It's absolutely amazing. But anyway, so I used my homemade feed recipe last year. I did not have a single bird under five pounds after they've been dressed out. So those are amazing. Um, they are not a heritage breed. You cannot buy males and females and breed them and get the same thing. But I will tell you that we did keep a couple of roosters back um, last year and they bred to our chickens and we hatched out the eggs. And some of them grew fast, some of them didn't. <laughs> um, one of them we still have running around, um, the offspring, it's a rooster. It looks really, really similar to um, I'm not going to be able to remember the name now. I just ordered some chicks of this one breed and I saw it and said, oh my gosh, that's our rooster that we accidentally bred. He's running around. Um, I can't remember the name of it though. Anyway, for sure, Freedom Rangers. They have two options, regular Freedom Rangers. 
Um, and then they have Freedom Ranger Color Yield. We ordered the Color Yield this year. They have white under feathers, so it makes it easier to pluck, and you don't get like the spots like that look like ink spots from their feathers when you pluck them. Um, and so anyway, we went with those. And I don't know if I've been too impressed. We have one that's got like some sort of funky thing happening with it. It's like not the bird flu, but it's like off balance and like it looks like it might have like some sort of pelvic issue. So anyway. And then I've got another one that keeps trying to poop out its butthole, like, you know, actually like push it out. So anyway, I've already applied hemorrhage cream twice and push it back in. So I'm like kind of done. So if that one drops off, it just is what it is. I don't want to eat a bird that I had to keep putting hemorrhage cream in its butt. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, I didn't have any of those problems with the Freedom Ranger, the specific Freedom Ranger ones. Um, so I don't know that I would say I would do color yield again. I don't know if it's something that's specific to their hybrid or what but um it's not a, it is a hybrid yeah it's a hybrid so anyway now i'm behind on comments sorry i have six easter eggers for eggs i use scratch and peck it's soy corn free and non-gmo it is pricey yeah so ancestral living oh wait what was your name hang on hang on i gotta try over the c what was it hang on hang on i'm gonna try it was it was where are you uh oh now i lost a comment where is her name come on help me out Clarissa or something? Sorry, with the C. Ah, I lost it. Sorry, Ancestry Living. I guess I'm just going to call you that for now because I can't remember your name. <laughs> um, there is one up there for egg layers. Actually, there's several recipes on my channel for egg layers because over the last years we had shortages with feed. I just kept redoing uh, my feed uh, recipe. There's also a video up on how to calculate your own protein in your feed so you could literally calculate it with any feed you can get your hands on just in case you have shortages and you're not able to get your stuff. But the stuff that I make is like an equivalent to the um, Scratch and Peck brand. Um, it's just whole greens. Carissa. Ha! Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to write out a piece of paper. I knew it was a C. It was something. Okay. Carissa, 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 Carissa. Got it. Okay. Maybe. We'll see. Um, so anyway, that's what we do for meat birds. I love them. We butchered ours at, I think it's 12 weeks, what we butchered ours at. And, but, 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 with the Freedom Rangers, you don't have any pressure to butcher them. So if you're sick, maybe you don't feel like killing a chicken this weekend. Not a big deal. Wait another weekend. Feed them some more feed. They're just fine. Um, they just get bigger. In fact, the one that we held over until this year was 10 pounds of meat. He was basically a turkey when we butchered him and we only fed him the high protein um meat bird recipe until the 12 week mark or was it 14 i think it's 12 weeks um and then we switched over to like regular egg layer protein wise and so um it really wasn't that much more money to feed one more chicken and he got huge 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 10 pound chicken i had to he would not fit in my instant pot that is the one thing i will tell you though about Freedom Rangers, if you buy the males, the first batch we do was all males, all roosters. Um, they are a much taller bird, so there's more dark meat. Uh, and if you use your oven rotisserie a lot to make um, rotisserie chicken, Freedom Ranger males will not fit. The females will fit. The males' legs are too long. Also, the males' Freedom Rangers will not fit inside an instant pot hole. They're just too long. Their legs are just too long. It doesn't matter unless you cut them up, then you're good. Oh, look. It's a happy song. My dishwasher is done washing the dishes. I wish my kids had a happy song when they wash the dishes. They don't. I'm just happy the dishwasher got loaded and started. It's great. Okay, so now I'm behind again. Julie says, I go to the local brewery my friend owns, and he gives... Me buckets of fermented barley. Oh, nice. Yeah, I bet the chickens love that. Carl says, Ancestor Living and Nutrition. I'll visit your channel tomorrow. Thanks for the information. Cool. I think I missed whatever information that was. But I can scroll to look. So anyway, yeah, those are our meat birds. That's what, that's what we're doing. Um, and our kids help. They're very, very connected with where food comes from. And what it takes to get food on the table. 
In fact, the chicken that we're eating tonight was from one of the five roosters that my kids and I butchered by ourselves. Um, so that was kind of fun. Everything in life has a cycle. Animals have a cycle. We have a cycle. It's life, life and death, and, you know, it's a cycle. Okay, so I just kind of put these in on a nice pan here. I'm going to just go ahead and sprinkle with salt. I'm going to say probably a teaspoon going on the french fries because who doesn't like healthy salt? Okay, add a teaspoon. Then you can either do paprika or smoked paprika. I'm going to use smoked paprika. It's almost empty. If I had more, I'd probably do like a teaspoon, but these are still going to taste good. Seems some moisture got in the jar somehow. Now all I have left are little tiny balls. That's not good. Still smells good though. Okay. And we need garlic, either powder or granules. Granules make it look nicer. And we're just gonna slip this in with a casserole. Fifty degrees. Cool. Okay. Uh, go to the brewery for a different reason. <laughs> hey, that's a good reason too. I'll check out your channel too. I'm gonna write it down because the one unfortunate thing about streaming with less than a thousand subscribers is that I lose all of these comments. It's really sad. So I'm going to first write down Carissa, so I remember it, I'm going to write it like six times in the next week, and then, I'm just guessing it's Ancestor or Living, and Nutrition. Cool. Alright, so then, this is your reminder now guys, there is no cooking class next week. Um... Let's see, where will I be? Tuesday night I will be in Missouri. So I will not be here. I will be not cooking here. In fact, I won't be cooking at all next Tuesday night. <laughs> My brother is actually going to be doing the cooking. So there will be no class this week. Um, and then the following week we'll obviously have a class and I have no idea what we're making yet. So I will put out like a separate, it's like I used to, a little tiny video telling you what we're making and the ingredients you're going to need just in case you want to cook with me. But just remember that next week, there's no cooking class. Um, I don't think I'll go live on my vacation. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I try to put my phone down when I'm on vacation. So um, anyway, let's talk about my necklace. I'm going to take it off. So this necklace I bought probably, you know what I totally forgot to put on top? Look at this, guys. I forgot to put on my two cups of cheese on top of the, on top of the meat. So hang on, let me get that back out. We need two cups of cheddar cheese on the top. What was I thinking? Luckily, you can't tell that I forgot it. All right. We'll just put the cheddar cheese right on top. It's usually how I do it anyway. Just forgot to do it this time. Two cups of cheddar cheese on top. Okay, now it's gonna go back into the oven. Now that it's ready. I'm actually going to turn my oven up to like 400 degrees because of those carrot fries. I want them to actually cook. Okay, now we've done all the ingredients. All right, I will have fun on my vacation. I'm gonna see my brother for the first time in six years. So that'll be good. Um, I just started it, but he was talking about coops and I turned a playhouse into a coop. Oh, nice. I actually built, um, and you can kind of see a glimpse in it in the video for the meat bird feed. Um, I, I built a portable chicken tractor with PVC because everyone knows wood is like super expensive right now. And so when I, when I quoted out the wood, even like the, the thinnest and simplest of wood, it was like over $700 per chicken tractor. These are 10 by 10 chicken tractors, so they'll hold 50 birds. Um, 
And I was not willing to pay $700 for that. So I looked into it and we ended up getting two for that price. So that was great. Okay. <laughs> Ancestral living, I totally agree with you. That's all I'm going to say about it. <laughs> I haven't, uh, we're opposites. I'll say it that way. <clears throat> I love him dearly. We're just opposites. So um, anyway, this is my necklace. We'll talk about that. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but it's like the tree of life. It's super pretty. Um, somebody had asked me about this, and so we're going to talk about it because <clears throat> I wear it all the time. I wear it when I'm sleeping sometimes. Um, I take it off to take a shower. But I ordered this about three to four months ago because <clears throat> it has something called organite in it, but also it has um, shungite rock. If you're not familiar with either of those, you might want to look into them. Um, the reason why I wear it is because it helps protect my body against radiation. Radiation coming from multiple sources. So, um, Shungite in particular is really, really great with 5G. Um, and also electrical, uh, electrical radiation. Um, and then the Shungite is good with pretty much any radiation. Or, sorry, the, hang on, not Shungite, Organite is good with pretty much any radiation. Um, but the Shungite really trumps the Organite when it comes to 5G. So, um, I bought this, um, on Etsy. There was only one seller in the entire world that I could find that drills holes in the top. Everybody else uses these stupid plastic or cheap metal clasps where there's a hole in the top and then they just like expect this little clasp that just has two little fingers to hold your pendant on your necklace and it does not and you lose them in the field 100% of the time and it just drives me nuts because you spend a lot of money for this kind of stuff so this particular necklace was made by lucky stone gift on Etsy um, this necklace was $50 and it shipped from Ireland um, literally she's the only person in the entire world that makes it this way and I love it so the story behind organite is it links back to Tesla. And so if you haven't actually looked into who Tesla was and some of his inventions, hopefully you can still find them and they haven't been removed on the internet. Um, a lot of his work has been stolen by the U.S. government. Um, but anyway, he uh, invented or found um, organite. And so what he learned was that organite is um, copper, which is what the tree is made out of. There's a copper in this. When you combine copper and quartz crystal, and uh, I always say it, I always say this wrong. It's either resin or resin. Resin, I think, is what it is. Um, into a pendant. Uh, basically, what ends up happening is when you combine those three, it puts out uh, negative energy. Um, everything that's in our environment that is bad for us, like um, cell phone radiation, any sort of radiation is positively charged. So. This puts out a negative charge just like your body. So when you wear this, it doesn't mean that I'm not being exposed to any of that. That's not what this means. This means that this is putting out, out in front of me, because I wear it on my chest here, it's putting out um, negative energy, um, which helps to counteract the, the bad positive energy coming at my body. So my body is absorbing less of the positive energy because I'm wearing something that, has, that puts out a lot of negative energy. He actually used this technology um, to make it rain. So um, back in the Dust Bowl age, he made this technology, um, like I said, use it to make it rain. And um, so some certain people didn't like that too much. So um, anyway, so that's why I wear this. And then the Shanghai is specifically 4 or 5G. Um... If you don't know a lot about 5G, you should really look into it. It's very, very dangerous. Um, and it's coming to a city near you. Um, so anyway, I just, this is not like the ultimum. You're not ever going to get away from 100% um, radiation, even if you live completely off grid in the middle of a forest all by yourself. As long as there are satellites in the sky above you, you will never completely get away from it. But it's just like toxins, you guys. The, the If you can just lower it, if you can just lower it, it's better. Just like um, phytic acid. I was having a conversation with some people this last week. It's not about completely eliminating phytic acid out of your diet. It is about reducing it. 
all of us have a different level, level of phytic acid that our body can put up with, and you don't know what that is. There's no way to test it. And so even I will have a different load that I can handle than my own children. And so what you want to do is you want to lower it as much as possible. Um, let's see, people are going Wi-Fi free, but I live in a city right now. Impossible. I know. Um, and if you live in an apartment, it's even worse because usually everyone has a router. Um, but if you live alone in your own home in a city, if you can just shut off your Wi-Fi router every night when you go to bed, that's when your body's rebuilding itself. Um, so if you can just shut that router off for just that amount of time, your body will appreciate it because it'll have a whole night of being able to re rebuild itself. Basically, a, a router in your home on is like living with a um, it's like living with a 5G tower in your home. Uh, okay, so I believe it's like bromine and iodine. Yes, bromine and iodine, also fluoride. Fluoride is inside the water that also, um, if you imagine your body like with keys, um, certain keys only fit in certain spots and the same spot that iodine fits in, which all of our bodies need, um, so does fluoride. And bromide, which they put in bread. Is it made out of copper? So the little tree in the middle, I'm trying to get a good view of it, is made out of copper, yes. Um, just, just give yourself a break. Unplug all of your appliances that are not running right now, you guys. Um, Little, little, uh, people don't really realize how much. Just close it, baby. I'm making it. Nope, not yet. Okay. No, it's not. I'll come and get you. You give, you give me 20 more minutes, it'll be all done. Okay. They're so hungry because we. Okay, I, I will come get you when it's done, I promise. Uh, we're going to take our car to go get new tires on it for our trip. And, um, so I brought the granola bars, but it was like an early snack at like two o'clock. So now everyone thinks it's like, I don't know what time it is. Everybody thinks it's like seven and we haven't even had enough dinner yet, even though it's not. Um, so anyway, what I was saying was like fluoride also, um, blocks that spot where your iodine should be. And iodine helps, um, support your thyroid. Your thyroid looks like a shield that's in your neck. And, um, basically it absorbs a lot of the radiation that you're exposed to. And so um, if you can support that, we need a lot more iodine than our ancestors did. Our ancestors used to be able to just eat kelp from the ocean um, and be just fine. But that's because they didn't have Wi-Fi, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have electricity in their homes. I mean, the list goes on and on. They, didn't, they weren't exposed to x-rays or you fill in the blank. And so your thyroid is really taking a beating. And what happens is once that thyroid grows down, you have other problems like adrenal fatigue, which is being tired even though you're getting enough sleep, always feeling exhausted, having panic attacks, having trouble sleeping at night, um, gaining um, weight is, is back to the thyroid, hypothyroid. And the problem is a lot of thyroid tests, they don't even pick on it, up on it until you're basically dying and they're like, oh, you have a thyroid issue. Um, and so, yeah, so all of us need iodine. If you are not on iodine, an iodine supplement, um, I would strongly encourage before you start an iodine supplement that you look um, into um, the Iodine Crisis by Lynn Farrow. It's a book. Please get it and please read it before you start on iodine. Iodine is a very strong detoxer of things like fluoride and bromide because it pushes it out of the body and that can make you really sick. So there are some other things that you need to take um, before you start yourself on some iodine, okay? I'm going to scroll, scroll back up because I'm like behind on comments. Okay, so Brenda says, I do not have Wi-Fi, just a cell phone with service. Yes. I avoid fluoride at all costs. I use coconut oil toothpaste. Nice. Okay. Hello, I don't have kids, but I think that one is starving. <laughs> um, okay. And Sister Living says, fluoride also depletes calcium from our bones. I use iodine drops 2%. So I use... Um, hang on, I'm coming back. No worries. Ugh. I need to order some more, actually. So maybe this is like my little reminder to order some more. So I use a pill form called Iodorol, and I buy it at supplementfirst.com. 
um, and I take one of these. Now, if you're just starting on iodine and that book will walk you right through it, you're gonna want Lugol's solution. It's a liquid drop and you're gonna start with like one drop plus the other supplements that they wanna put you on. So important. Um, they're basically gonna put you on other supplements that you can buy that are gonna support your detox system so you don't get sick when you start this. But okay, let's, 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 let's just like rewind a little bit. About, you know, 80 years ago, 60 years ago, they used to put iodine in our bread because they saw people that had what's called goiter. That's when your, when your thyroid swells in your neck. You can see it on people's photos. It's right here and it bulges, okay? When they go to take a photo, and that's, that's called goiter. It's when, you're, um, it's when your thyroid is literally swelling to absorb as much iodine out of your, your blood as it possibly can. It's the same thing on your ovaries if you have cysts. It is literally swelling to get any sort of iodine out of your blood. Make a long story short, for whatever reasons, and I'm not going to speculate why, um, they decided to switch out iodine for bromide. Uh, and bromide does not support your thyroid. It does not support your ovaries. It does not support anything about your body. It's just bromide, and it actually fills the holes where the iodine should be and does not allow your body to absorb iodine. So anyway, um, you start on the drops and you take the other supplements that they recommend in that book. It's called um, The Iodine Crisis by Lynn Farrell. Um, but anyway, eventually you work your way up to one of these tablets. It's Ironoral. This is 12.5 milligrams, I think. Um, and I love that website, supplementfirst.com, because they sell it in a 250 tablet jar. When I buy something, I only want to pay for shipping once for like three months. Um, so anyway, that's where I buy my stuff. Um, Ancestor Living and Nutrition says you're so knowledgeable. Where did you learn this info? I am a crazy researcher. Um, I am a, a Weston A. Price chapter leader, uh, along with my other friend, Mary. And I know Mary's not watching this, but if you ever watch this, Mary, I love you, Mary, and I appreciate you, and you're amazing, and you've done so much, so much in my life to encourage me and push me to keep researching and doing better for my family. So I appreciate you, Mary. If you ever watch this, I appreciate you. Um, so anyway, um, the Weston A. Price Foundation has yearly conferences. And I mentioned the Weston A. Price Foundation in my last video. If you are not a member, I do not get anything for referring you, okay? But if you go to www.westonaprice.org and become a member, it's only 40 bucks a year, you guys. And that money goes directly into research for the things that I'm sharing with you today. And what you end up getting in that is you get a shopping guide. Um... Oh, hey, Deborah. Okay, so back to that. We, we just talked about this. It's called Lucky Stone Gift. And she's on Etsy. She's in Ireland. These are $50 a piece. But she is legitimately the only person in the entire world who sells on Etsy that actually builds a quality product. Okay? Um, so anyway, if you are a member of the Weston A. Price Foundation, they send out four four uh, journals a year to you. And in those journals are a bunch of um, articles written by doctors and everything and the latest studying that they have done on different uh, health topics. It's absolutely worth your money. You also get a, um, a shopping guide that I never use. <laughs> but um, that's only because I've been doing this for a while. When I first started, I did use it. And it's a shopping guide that lists off all of the brands of um, like the food manufacturers that are safe to buy from. Um, so anyway, Deborah, you kind of missed it. I don't know if you got to sit through all of my explanation or not, but um, this basically helps protect your body against radiation from any source. And it has something that's called shungite in it, which is a natural rock that comes from the earth that actually helps protect you from 5G. Okay, I'm going to go back, guys, because I'm, I'm behind on comments again. Um, okay, so, yeah, so anyway, basically, the Weston Price Foundation has a annual conference, and everyone is invited, um, depending on your location, it could be close to you, it could be far away from you, and it's, um, I don't know, $300, $400, um, and they have all of their speakers come to that one spot, and you get to sit through as many hours as you can possibly stand for four days, so I learned a ton of stuff from there. Um, let's see. What else do we have? So you can do a drop of the iodine in your coffee, but also um, if it bothers you, uh, if you put it in some milk, you can't even taste it. I keep forgetting to send in my renewal fee too. And so, uh, hang on. 
Carissa. Ha! I remembered it without even looking. It says upside down. Um, I always forget and it always expires and I always call and apologize. It's like I should know better or something since I'm a chapter leader, but um, you're welcome, Deborah. Abundantly blessed. Carl says, I'm blown away by the first 15 pages of the book. Great information that are eye-opening. Yes. I was watching while eating. Thank you for the info. Where is the conference at? Okay, so this, it's um, different every year. This year, I think it's in Tennessee, if I remember right, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, if you get on the website, they have a banner right across the top. Um, that's the www.westonaprice.org. Um, and they advertise there. All information is there. Um, you can look into how much a hotel room is, all that stuff. Um, but anyway, I think it's in Tennessee. But they try to do like East Coast, West Coast, Center in the United States, East Coast, you know, so that it's off each year. It's in a different spot and closer to other people. Anyway, I'm just watching the wind outside. We're supposed to get rain tonight, but it's not supposed to come in until later. Okay, yeah, so that's where the conference is at. Um, I got to attend one as well, and uh, Carissa. Ha! My brain stopped there for a second. Uh, I loved it. It was absolutely amazing. They, they cook amazing food that you don't have to worry about. It's all healthy, um, ancestral-type food. Very, very good. Don't have to worry about any of it. Um, radiant Life. Uh, filters all of the water and they have water stands um, throughout the conference center and so that's absolutely delicious and awesome of them they provide it free of cost uh, let's see what else what else was fun I, I volunteered for a little while they take volunteers um, and then they they knock part of the cost of the um, conference off for you which is really helpful I actually got a free ride scholarship because I wrote in um, about my family and stuff, and so they actually paid for the whole conference for me, so I just had to pay to get there, which was amazing. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so that's that. It's, it's an amazing, amazing thing. If you can make it, it's totally worth going. Sorry, I'm watching the weather outside. Ever since we had that really bad storm with 107 mile per hour winds, every time the wind kicks up, I'm like, what's happening outside? <laughs> <sighs> and I just saw a goose running up the driveway, like, help, the, the wind's picking up, so, anyway, um, yeah, Sally Fallon's books are amazing, also, um, if you don't have any of, um, okay, now I'm going to forget his name, hmm, it's not going to come to me, is it, Dr. Thomas Cowan, if you have any of, um, his books. If you don't have them, go buy them. The Contagion Myth will blow your mind. Um, the government had that one pulled, so you have to buy that used. Um, but anyway, he also has a BitChute account. It's Dr. Tom Cowan on there um, with information that just whoosh, blow your mind. David Schleschelhauser is live streaming whether or not in South... I hope it's not in South Dakota. You're going to say Dakota, are you? Mm. I think I'm just supposed to get rain. It just picked up and it's just blowing dust around. I don't think I'm supposed to have any crazy weather. <laughs> I hope not anyway. All right. I'm going to go back. Hang on. I'm behind again. So I live in southeastern South Dakota. Yeah, it was 107 miles per hour wind. It was insane. They said it was supposed to be 90. So, I mean, I guess they were only like 20 miles per hour off. But um, anyway, um... Yeah, I do not have a storm shelter. I do not have a storm shelter. <laughs> the plan is to put in a root cellar. I have my location picked out. It's actually technically half already dug, but um, I'm not sure what the rest of the hole is going to have in it. I think it used to be like a dump site for like the original <laughs> farmhouse here. <laughs> my husband is not excited about digging the rest of it. Um, but anyway... Uh, yeah, so we're going to put in a root cellar. I don't know if we'll get it done this year or next year. We'll just have to see. I'd love to get it done because I love root cellars. I love to root cellar food. I love to keep things cool without electricity. I think that's great. So we do not have a root cellar. Instead, we uh, went underneath uh, a stairwell that we have into the house. That's where we went with 107 mile power winds. It was, it was insane. It was the scariest moment as a mom, I will be honest. Deborah says, I'm in Lighting County, Iowa, 100 miles per hour. 
Yeah, it was nuts. Ancestral Living says, oh, Carissa. Carissa says, I follow Brian Sanders' Food Lies. He interviews the best people on health and nutrition. Oh, I'm going to write that one down too. Hang on. Brian. Oh, hang on. Sanders. Cool. Hi, Diana. Indianapolis. I missed the recipe. I'll catch the recording. Yeah, it's really easy and really good, but even use the stove. It was so simple. Grew up in Dodge City, Kansas. I hate tornadoes. Yes. So my mother also hates all storms, pretty much. And so before that storm came in, she texted me and said, um, I think she said, are you paying attention to the weather? It's supposed to have 75 mile per hour winds. And so I thought to myself, this is the woman I've grown up with, and she exaggerates storms a lot, so maybe it's only like 35 miles per hour, but like, you know, she's just worried about it. And so I kind of like brushed it off, and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to just like kind of batten down the hatches, you know, and pick up in front of the house so if we get 75 mile per hour winds, then it won't break my house. And so the girls and I did that and I kept looking to the south and the storm just kept building and it was getting really dark and I thought, this doesn't look good. So then we put all the animals up and then my phone went off, which I usually don't carry my phone on me, but I did for some reason that day and there was an alert saying 90 mile per hour winds. And so when that came over, I knew my mom wasn't exaggerating anymore. <laughs> And that there had to be a lot more things that had to be battened down before the storm hit. And so we got those things taken care of. And I brought my seedlings inside because right now I have them like in a tunnel. Um, but anyway, and so then um, we were inside and I looked over the horizon and I saw the dust storm coming. And I knew what it was because I've been in one before. And... Um, Anyway, I knew what it was, and I knew I needed to get all of the children into our safe spot as quickly as possible. And so we did that, and it was very scary, and we were there for about 30 minutes. And our concrete floor that we were on was shaking, so that was really scary. And pretty much, I, I, I don't know, in my mind I thought this is probably the last few minutes I'm going to have with my kids. So um, anyway, it was just a scary like thing to go through in your mind with your with yourself. <laughs> uh, um, so anyway, but um, we did have some damage. I'm sure you guys read all about that. So I won't bore anybody with that. But um, it's all fixed except for this window that's over here because this window. I don't know what's so special about it, but something special about it. And so I'm not gonna have a window. Um, above my sink for a while and that's okay except for I kind of like like looking out when I'm doing my dishes but that's okay it'll come back it'll be okay yes Carl is from North Carolina um yeah it was it was pretty scary and I think it was probably the scariest things my kids have ever been through it so I know every time we have a storm come through whether it's like a storm or just rain my kids are they just go crazy which is unfortunate but um, my, my oldest says, please don't call it a storm, Mom, unless it's going to be bad. Just call it rain. So that's what, that's what we're calling it now. Um, Deborah says it's not storming here so far. Yeah, I think we're just supposed to get rain tonight. I don't think it's supposed to be a technical storm, although the little weather thing did have a lightning bolt on it. So I'm not sure. Um, and then Deborah says, how far are you from Sioux Falls? I am about an hour and 45 minutes without traffic. Um, I don't have friends. It's about two hours to Sioux City. I don't have friends or watch the news, so I have no clue what's happening in the world unless the hubby tells me. I actually don't even have a working television, Ancestral Living. Uh, when we moved out here and we lived off-grid for seven months, um, I just hung the TV on the wall as, like, to normalize what we were doing even though we didn't have electricity. Uh... And even now, we rarely watch the television, and we um, opt for, like, DVDs or movies or something um, instead. So I think it builds a healthier brain. I think it builds um, genius children who know how to um, imagine and come up with things on their own instead of everything being provided for them. Let's see. Yeah, North Carolina. That's, that's Carl. I'm going to check on my dinner because it smells good in here. 
Oh, what's up? I'm going to probably flip this carrot fries. Just a little bit more fat to the carrot fries. If they look dried out, you gotta add more fat. Let's see if I can find my spatula. I bet it's in here. Oh, nope, it's over there. I gotta wash it. meal I'm, I'm serving the carrot fries and then I'm also serving my homemade baked bean recipe which is up on the channel under pork and beans and what I did was I just omitted the pork and just made the same recipe minus the pork I think these are done oh yeah they're done but uh, I love them a little bit crispy so if I wanted to do that I'd have to add a little bit more oil but when they get just a little bit of singy Mm -hmm. It's like a sweet potato fry, and I've actually done this 50% um, sweet potato fries and 50% carrots, and you can hardly tell the difference. They're so sweet. They're so good. So I'm going to put this back in. Hang on one second. I'm going to turn off my oven and keep them warm. The casserole is also done. You guys might want to see that, so I'll pull it out so you guys can see it. The only thing that this is missing is a little bit of glitter. So I'm gonna put some glitter on top. Turn off the oven. I'm just gonna throw some parsley on top, just so it looks pretty. I like pretty food. I think it tastes better when it's pretty. And I know it took like two cents and two seconds to add some prettiness to the top. So there it is. I'm just going to put it back on it to keep it warm while we wrap things up here. I'm behind on comments again, guys. Okay. You're lucky I want to be off-grid. Well, it was quite the adventure. <laughs> oh, we need some smell of it, and it's so good, guys. Off-grid community near a beach. Well, you wouldn't want to be off-grid near a beach if there's a hurricane, but, you know. Glitter, yeah. So, I, um... I like to, I call it glitter. I like to add some sort of sprinkle of color to the top of my casseroles. I just think it like looks like a picture like you'd see out of a magazine. And I think it makes, makes it taste better. Um, let's see, there was another question, I think. Okay, yeah, so living off grid. I'll just talk about that really quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes to talk about it. So basically, my husband and I sold our home. A lot of you guys don't know our story. I haven't told our story since I had 500 subscribers and that was a long time ago. So um, our story is we um, bought a home that was a fixer-upper, fixed it up, and then by the time um, it was time to sell, uh, we had, had the home almost completely paid off. So what we did was we took the cash we got from the sale of our home, and we are big Dave Ramsey people, and so if you don't know what financial freedom is, if you've never heard of Dave Ramsey before and getting out of debt and um, owing no man anything, Look into Dave Ramsey. Um, so anyway, um, basically we bought, we decided that instead of doing a loan for our home, that we would pay cash for it. And so basically uh, we decided to build it ourselves because my husband, we used to have our own construction business, so it's not like my husband doesn't know how to build and it's what he does for a living. And so um, basically we built a small cabin-like structure that was completely off-grid and I lived off-grid for... Um, six months or seven, 1800 style, no electricity, no nothing. Um, and then while, while we started building this building, which is side by side with the other one. And, um, anyway, I did it for a few reasons. I wanted, I always wanted to know that I could do it if I had to. Um, and then also, uh, it's much better for your body to sleep away from electricity. And so, our kids' rooms will actually always stay over in that building. Eventually, these two buildings will be connected. And so we have our on-grid um, facilities in here. We have flushing toilets. We have a shower. We have hot water at the tap instead of having to boil it. Um, <clears throat> we have all those good things. And then um, we can go over to the other building and we can sleep away from electricity. So that is the plan. 
and we did it in stages. We did phase one uh, was the off-grid building, phase two was this on-grid building, and then phase three will be connecting the two. Uh, and we're completely cash flowing all of it so that we own it all. A bank does not own it. We are not paying um, interest on our house. We're not making payments until we're 60. Um, we wanted to own what we had. So that is our story. We worked our butt off. My husband in the last 10 years has worked a ton of hours um, and to get us where we are. And so we just work together as a team and that's where we're at. Okay, so yeah, hurricanes, no good when you're off grid. <laughs> Can you do a video on homemade egg rolls? I've actually never been, I never made egg rolls because I actually don't like them. Um, but I could probably find a recipe somewhere and do a video on it because I know my husband loves them. I'm not a big fan, but my husband does. Um, yeah, Schwann's is, ooh. Uh, I, we just saw Schwann's vehicle the other day while we were in town and the girls are like, Remember when we used to order food from them and he used to give us free popsicles? I was like, yeah, um, too bad that their truck doesn't say that it's delivering nourishment because it doesn't, because they're not. Um, let's see, hang on. Carl says it's time of the morning coffee time for the Mrs. 720 AM Wednesday. Yeah, he, she's ahead of you, isn't she, Carl? Carl said, I've talked twice his course in my church a few years ago and got my folks out of debt. Hey, good for you, Carl. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is amazing to be out of debt and not owe anything to anybody. Um, Deborah says, yep, that's what we want to do. I want a half acre. We have no debt either. Yeah, it's the best. You know what? Credit score and everything, it's all uh, linked into the system. So Carl says, see everyone in two weeks. Enjoy your vacation. Thank you so much, Carl, for watching. Say hello to your wife for me. Ancestral living, or Carissa says, just fry them in lard. I like anything fried in lard, actually. Oh, the egg rolls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, would, that could probably be good. All right, you guys. I'm going to jump off because I told my kids I'd come get in when the dinner was done and they're starving to death. So um, this week, obviously, I still got more videos coming out. I'm going to have um, maybe posting tomorrow, depending on how long it takes to edit it, will be my um, homemade beef jerky. It's um, teriyaki flavored beef jerky. Um, so that might be coming out um, tomorrow. It's kind of a longer video. Um, also, we're going to have more food prep for the, the road trip. We've got crackers, uh, cheese, uh, homemade sprouted wheat, cheese it crackers, homemade Ritz crackers using sprouted wheat, and homemade sour cream and onion crackers using um, sprouted wheat for the trip. Um, we've also got um, some different recipes to pack into um, wraps. So anyway, that's that. Anyway, yes, yeah, stay, stay stress-free. Absolutely. The best you can in this world, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me, okay? If you guys have any questions, remember you guys can email me. That is abhomestead22 at gmail.com, okay? You guys have a good night, and I'll see you guys in two weeks, all right? Take care.